And so the last of the pea types that I have grown for this year are a couple that I started really early in the hoop house. And they are about played out and with the hot temperatures and being in the hoop house, they are sadly going to be done for for a couple of, well, they're going to be done for because the heat is just going to get too much and they're going to be, they're going to tap out and be done. So one of those types that I have is this one here, which is called the Wild Peas of Umbria. What? So uh, I thought that would be fun to try just because it's, you know, wild peas and of Umbria. So maybe there is uh, some like land race characteristics or um, just general more historic genetics within it that we can like utilize as a comparison between the two. And there are some really fun traits about this. So the seeds themselves are very small and very round, much like you find in a lot of the archaeobotanical, especially the Neolithic um, preservations and sites. The pea itself grows really tall and lanky. Um, the tendrils are not hypertendrilling at all. There's just these very few delicate, sparse, very thin, gracile kind of um, tendrils to it. The flower themselves are beautiful. There is this delightful kind of pink, uh, light pink banner and deeper purple throated. Um, oh my goodness, I've lost my botany terms. Anyway, the other part of the pea flower, that's not the banner. Um, they're tasty. And then the peas themselves are very delicate. They're small, which makes sense, right? Because most domestication, qualities is that we're looking for bigger um, pods, easier to harvest kind of things. But, oh my goodness, some beautiful plump pea pods that exist within that. So that is going to be really fun. So there's a good kick of pea to that, the pea flavor, but it's not sweet at all. That's really fun. And again, we're getting into that membrane aspect that um, Gerard speaks of, of one of the main differentiations between your garden pea with, that does not have a membrane and some of your other peas. So that's pretty cool. And then the other one that I have growing in here is a varietal called Admiral. And, ooh, this poor thing. It is done for the year. Anyway, so Admiral is a modern field pea. And a lot of times you'll hear these things um, called field peas. And they're used modernly for cover crops. And they don't give a care at all for what the pea actually tastes like. So I'm curious with this named varietal if what the pea will taste like. It is a white pea. So I'm really excited to compare the white peas of Admiral field peas to the more um, darker, browner, speckly, beautiful colored peas of our heirloom peas that I have growing outside. You can tell that it is that really super hyper, hyper tendriling characteristics. I mean, look at this tangled mess of just tendrils upon tendrils holding each other up. And then with that, the pea themselves, I mean, it's fairly standard pea pod look to it at all. Um, the shell, Oy, that's a tough shell. There's some really nice sized peas hiding out in there. Huh. Oh. Wowzers, that's an unfortunate end to this pea adventure. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to go sit down in the sweet pea patch and uh, cleanse the palate a bit after that. So, uh, I do not recommend the Admiral Pea for green pea eating. There is a bitterness about it. There's not much flavor except the bitter. Um, there's definitely no sweetness. I, I don't hold much hope for this tasting good when it comes to dry pea times, but we'll see, we'll see. I know I, I, I am biased to want to confirm my original hypothesis that modern field peas are disgusting, um, but it looks like all things are pointing in that direction. All right, so yeah, there's some other peas I'm growing. Ah, did I mention the wild peas of Umbria? They're lovely. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>